afternoon. Today's topic is natural logs and natural exponent functions. It's something I'm going to break into three different lessons, just so you know. Okay, all logarithmic and exponential functions fall into one of the few simple patterns. A natural logarithm function is a logarithm with base e, and its symbol is ln, which is natural log. And the log of base e x is the natural log x. And if you take this natural log and you integrate it, it's 1 over x, and then whatever x is, you take the derivative of it, which is what I've got uh, underneath here. Boom. Uh, so we need to know that ln, the derivative of ln, is the 1 over, and then we go inside and take the derivative of u, and the integrate of that is of 1 over something, du, is ln absolute value of u plus c. Closely related are natural exponent functions denoted as exp or e. Um, this is defined as the natural log of e, which is at uh, 2.718, and there's more numbers later on with it. They are inverses of each other, so they're equal to 1. So natural exponential functions and natural logarithmic functions are inverses, so that's great. So when we have ey to the x, or I'm sorry, ey equals x, then the base e logarithm of x is is the natural log is equal to the log e of term x, which is equal to y. Now, our natural log properties are just like our logarithm properties from pre-calc 30, where if we're multiplying, it's adding, and if we're dividing, we're subtracting, and then we have an exponent that comes out in front, just like in log, logs in pre-calc 30. So the base of the exponential function e is equal to 2.718281. It's just one of those magic numbers in math. Like pi, it comes up in calculus in all kinds of formulas. If you want to just type in e to the x in your calculator, you can see the numbers. So one of the things why this is special in calculus is that if we take the derivative of e to the x, it is e to the x. So basically, if you had a graph of it and you found the slope at any point on this curve, it would be e to the x. And it's really neat. Okay, so of course, if we take the derivative of something and it's e to the x, wouldn't that mean if we integrate it? it would also be e to the x. But we have to remember the plus c. You cannot forget the plus c, which I'm sure somebody was saying, what about plus c? So there it goes. And this is me trying to be funny. Again, in other words, if e x is its own mother, then its own child, it's its own child too, which I know is weird, but yeah, whatever. Okay, so let's find the derivatives of some examples here. So this first one here, I have f of x is equal to ln e to the x. Well, wait a minute, Mr. B, didn't you just say they're inverses of each other? Yeah. So that becomes, oh, come on here, oops, uh, there we go, then it becomes equals 1 to the x. Well, wait a minute, isn't the derivative of 1 just 1? Uh, yeah, oops, wrong way, so perfect. You think, well, wait a minute, I have to take the derivative of the exponent. Yeah, what's the derivative of x? Well, it's 1, what's 1 to the 1? I guess that would be 1. Okay, next one here, uh, the derivative of f of x equals e to the x. Oh, you just said that was itself. Yeah, done. Pray for those. Another one here, e to the negative 4x is what exponent is there. So again, the derivative of e to the negative 4x would be e to the negative 4x. But we still got to keep going. We've got to take the derivative of what's in the exponent. So what the derivative of negative 4x, of course, would be negative 4, and then just kind of neaten it up so that our numbers are in front, because that's what we do. Uh, next one, f of x is equal to e to the x plus 3, just like before. The derivative part starts with, okay, it's just the same thing, but then you've got to go in the exponent. All right, so derivative of 2x plus 3, well, that would just be 2, so then it's got to rewrite it with the 2 in front. Bingo. Okay, k here, f of x equal to e to the ln x. Well, wait, we just said they're inverses. They're right. So it's just f of x is equal to x. They basically cancel out. And oh my goodness, pray for that question because the derivative of x is 1. Oh, lovely. Two more. Hopefully these get a little bit harder. Okay, f of x of e to the e to the 2x. Well, first of all, oops, ah, crap. That's too much too soon. I'm going to do this. And even that's too much. I'm going to oh, do this and then do that. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I messed up. So 
the derivative, of course, is e to the e to two x, but then we've got to go into the exponent. So the derivative of e to the two x would be e to the two x. We've got to go into that exponent. What's the derivative of two x? Well, that's two. So then just to neaten that up, put the two out in front, and then up, wait a minute, these are the same bases, aren't they? Well, sure, it's e to the e two x and e to the two x. Well, what can we do to our exponents if they're the same base? Well, we add them. So we get two e to the e two x plus two x. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, one more, a little bit of product rule here. 10x squared times e to the negative 3x. Well, first part, I guess we'll just take the derivative of 10x squared, get 20x e to the negative 3x, and then we can go to the other part. And again, I didn't do this quite right, all the way I'd like it. So we have our 10x squared, which doesn't change, but the derivative of e to the negative 3x, which is e to the negative 3x, but then we've got to go to the exponent, which is 3x. And then you can just kind of neaten it up a little bit by putting that, uh, multiplying that 10 and negative 3. But wait a minute, what do we got to do with this to kind of neaten it up? Yeah, common factors, what can we pull out of both terms? It looks like a 10 and an x and e to the negative 3x. So we have something that looks like that because we pull out the common factor if we can. And then it's done. And then, sweet. <laughs> And then in, the, in your duotang, there's a sheet called, uh, we'll be doing this, going to the sheet a couple of times, 5.7 derivative and integrals. The questions for that is 22 to 30. And again, if you looking at these, it's like, I don't need to do that many, then don't do that many. But those are the questions that I used to assign. Okay. Part one.